I've got this pretty interesting functional equation problem to show you guys today. So let's see how it goes. We want to find all strictly increasing functions f from r to r. In other words, the domain is the real numbers and the codomain is also the real numbers such that f of x plus f inverse of x is equal to 2x for all real numbers x. And I want to point out very quickly that strictly increasing implies bijectivity and bijectivity implies invertibility. So you might be worried here that we're talking about this inverse function and maybe it doesn't exist. But in fact, the fact that this thing is strictly increasing means that it indeed does exist. Now, before we really get into it, I want to notice that the very simple function f of x equals x most definitely satisfies this condition. Well, it's strictly increasing and its inverse is itself. And so that means f of x plus f inverse of x is the same thing as x plus x, which is 2x. So we might as well assume from the very beginning that f of x is not equal to x. So in other words, that f is not the identity function. Well, obviously, if you were to write this up, you would say that that would be definitely a solution. And now we're going to build some other solutions. So we have assumed that f is not the identity function. So that means that we can find some real number, which I'll call t, such that f of t is not equal to t. But from here, there are really two cases that we could get at. So if f of t is not equal to t, well, then it's either bigger than t or less than t. So let's go ahead and write those as our two cases. So case number one is f of t is bigger than t. And case number two is that f of t is less than t. And I'm only going to do one of these because they're very, very similar. I'll do this one right here where f of t is bigger than t. And then I'll leave this one as maybe an exercise that you guys might want to write out by yourself. So now let's see where we can move from here. Well, I'm going to take f of t and write it in a pretty fancy way. So I'm going to write it as t plus f of t minus t. Well, so that's clearly f of t because the t and the minus t cancel. Now I'm going to collapse all of these numbers, this f of t minus t, into a single number a. So in other words, we've written f of t as t plus a with a equals to f of t minus t. Although we're not really going to need the fact that a is equal to f of t minus t kind of in the end. OK, so let's see what we can do with that. Well, I want to notice that I can rewrite this functional equation in the following way. So notice that for all values of x, we have f of x equals 2x minus f inverse of x. And so that's obviously just by moving this f inverse to the other side of the equation. But luckily enough, that allows us to calculate f of t plus a. And that's because we could evaluate each side of this equation with f inverse. And we'll see that we get for free that t is equal to f inverse of t plus a. So let's see what that gives us. So plugging that in here, we'll see that f of t plus a is equal to 2 times t plus a minus f inverse of t plus a, but that's just t. So in other words, we get t plus 2a. But now we could do this again, and we would see that f of t plus 2a is equal to f t plus 3a. And that's setting up some sort of pattern. So maybe we'll claim that for all natural numbers n, we have f of t plus n times a is equal to t plus n plus 1a. And let's prove that really quickly with induction. So notice that our base case is essentially done already, and that is done by this equation right here. So that means we just have to make an induction hypothesis and show that the next step follows from that induction hypothesis. So let's suppose that k is bigger than or equal to 1, and f of t plus ka is equal to t plus 
k plus 1a. And then from there, we want to calculate f evaluated at this thing right here. So let's do that. So let's notice that f evaluated at t plus k plus 1a. Well, that's going to be equal to 2 times t plus k plus 1a minus f inverse of t plus k plus 1a by this equation right here, which was equivalent to our given functional equation. But this equation right here, which is our induction hypothesis, can be inverted to give us a nice formula for this thing that I'm underlining in green. So notice that we will get 2 times t plus 2 times k plus 1 times a minus t plus k times a. But then after subtracting everything, we'll see that we get 2t minus t, which is t. And then we have 2 times k plus 1 times a minus k times a. So that's going to be k plus 2 times a. But that's exactly what we wanted to show in order to finish the induction step of this claim. So let's maybe bring that data to the top and then we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board, we saw that for all x from this set, so t, t plus a, t plus 2a, t plus 3a, we have f of x equals x plus a. And that's because we were able to write that f of t plus na as t plus n plus 1a, but then moving some things around here, we see that that is the same thing as t plus na plus a. And now we're just seeing that this is playing the role of x. Now then, since we have for all x in this infinite set, f of x is x plus a, it stands to reason that probably for all real numbers x, f of x is x plus a. So that's what we'll want to show. And we'll start by moving this backwards to the left. In other words, we'll see what happens to t minus a, t minus 2a, and then so on and so forth. And we can do that, again, by rewriting this equation a bit. So let's take this equation, and notice that we can use it to rewrite it as f inverse of x equals 2x minus f of x. Let's notice that that means f inverse of t is equal to 2 times t minus f of t. But we all know what f of t is from our original setup. That was equal to t plus a. So if you subtract that from 2t, you get t minus a. But now inverting this equation, which I'm underlining in green, we see that f evaluated at t minus a equals t. But notice that's the same thing as t minus a plus a. But now via a similar induction, we can move this set all the way backwards. In other words, we will get for all x in the set t plus n times a, where now n runs from all integers, we have f of x equals x plus a. So that includes like t minus a, t minus 2a, t minus 3a, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so let's move that up there and then we're ready for our final argument. Okay, so let's reiterate where we were. We showed that for all x that was of the form t plus n times a, where n was an integer, any integer, we have f of x equals x plus a. Furthermore, because we're in this setup where f of t is bigger than t, we know that a is positive. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down real quick. So we know that a is positive. But that tells us that all of these kind of offsets of t by multiples of a live on the real number line as follows. So we've got t, t plus a is to the right, t plus 2a is to the right, and then t minus a is to the left, t minus 2a is to the left of that, and then so on and so forth. So notice, if I take a value of x, which is any real number, it's going to fall in one of two places. It will either be in this set, or it will be strictly between two elements of this set. So notice if it's in this set, we already know that f of x equals x plus a. So let's assume that x is now not in that set. So now suppose x is not equal to t plus n a, and this is going to be true for all integers n. 
But where does that tell us that x lies? It tells us that x has to lie between two elements of this set. So I'll write that as this blue interval right here, and maybe this green dot is x. Okay, so just to reiterate, we really have two cases. X is either in this set or it's not in this set. If it's in this set, then f of x equals x plus a. If it's not in this set, then we have more work to do. So by our argument, we know that we can write x as being in the open interval t plus m minus 1 times a and t plus m times a. And then let's notice that we have not used the fact that we have a strictly increasing function yet. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's apply f to this. So that tells us that f of x is in the set f of this guy right here. But notice that f of this guy right here is just t plus m a. And then f of this guy right here is t plus m plus 1 a because of what we've shown already. But notice putting these two things together, we see that we immediately have that f of x is bigger than x. So that means we can write f of x as x plus f of x minus x collapse all these together into a number b. So that means we have f of x equals x plus b for some positive number b like that. And now we'll do exactly the same induction that we did before. So I won't like work out all of the details, but the induction that we did before will lead us to f of x plus n times b is the same thing as x plus n plus 1 times b. And that's actually going to set up the end game for this problem. So let's maybe bring the necessary information to the top and then we'll finish it off. So let's see what we've got so far. If x is a real number, it's either in this set. If it's in this set, then f of x is x plus a. If it's not in this set, then that's the work that we're finishing here. If it's not in this set, we still showed that it was equal to x plus b for some positive b. And we showed that f of x plus nb was x plus n plus 1b. Then we know that x is between two elements from this set by our previous argument. So now we want to inductively apply f to this guy right here and these two endpoints of this open interval. So let's do that. We'll apply f here, we'll apply f here, and we'll apply f here. Using the fact that it's strictly increasing all along to say that we still have the same setup as being inside this interval. So applying f here, we get x plus b. Applying f here, we get t plus m a and t plus m plus 1 a. Now, we'll apply f again. So let's apply f again. And notice that that's going to give us x plus 2 b is in the set t plus m plus 1 a, t plus m plus 2 a. So two applications of f brought us to x plus 2 b and then t plus m plus 1a and t plus m plus 2a. And so now, again, kind of inductively, we'll apply f a total of n times. So let's maybe write that as applying f n times. And we'll see that that will give us x plus nb is in the set t plus m plus n minus 1a, t plus m plus n a. And that's just following this pattern that we've seen here. Notice this is m plus one less than the number of applications of f. This is m plus the number of applications of f. And then this is like the number of applications of f. But notice that's equivalent to the following inequality. We have t plus m plus n minus 1 times a is less than x plus n b, which is less than t plus m plus n a. Then we can subtract x from both sides and divide all of the sides of this inequality by n. And that will give us t minus x plus m plus n minus 1 over n times a, oh, this is over n, I should say, um, is less than b, 
which is less than t minus x over n plus m plus n over n times a. So again, I subtracted by x and then I divided by n. So now let's let n tend towards infinity. And notice as n tends towards infinity, this is gonna go to zero because t is fixed and x is fixed but arbitrary. This thing is gonna go to zero for the same reason. And then m is just a fixed constant. So that means that this goes to the coefficient of n over the coefficient of n, which is one times a. So that means we have a is less than or equal to b, which is less than or equal to a. Again, that's because this guy right here trends off to one, and this guy right here also trends off to one because m is fixed but arbitrary while n is like our limiting variable. And then these strict inequalities turn into non-strict inequalities because we're taking a limit. We're using the squeeze theorem here. But now notice that since b lies between a and a, that tells us that b equals a, and that means that f of x equals x plus a. So recall we had that x was either in this set or it's not in this set. If it was in this set, then f of x was x plus a. If it's not in this set, then f of x is also x plus a. So that tells us that the only types of functions that satisfy this rule are functions that are f of x equals x plus some number. And that's a good place to stop.